Commissioner's Week is continuing here on Midwest Sportsnet, and I can't tell you how much of a privilege it is to get to visit with John Martin, who is the commissioner for the Sooner Athletic Conference based in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, commissioner, I know, and I'll probably call you coach more than once because I know that's wh- who, what you were doing when I first had the opportunity to get to, to work with you on a few things. But let's go to the commissioner role right now. Third commissioner in the history of the Sooner Athletic Conference that dates back a few decades as well. You follow Stan Wagnon, who is currently an athletic director at uh, the University of Central Oklahoma. And prior to that, John Hudson, who pretty much was there. I I joked off the air about him being there about 117 years. He was there for a long, long time since its inception back, I believe, in 1978. So he had about four decades at the helm in his time, too following some some great folks but you're you're a great person as well talk about being the leader there in the sooner well it's a great opportunity uh, you know I actually played in the sooner when I was playing basketball in the mid 90s at Oklahoma City University uh, ended up um, coaching in the sooner as well when I was at St Gregory's as a coach and then athletic director um, and I've known John since my playing days at OCU um, John still is involved in the conference. We still have him assign our basketball officials. I talk to him probably once a week year round, but then during the basketball season, probably every other day or so, just trying to line up officials and get the right ones for the right games. So he's still really involved. And uh, Stan came in as commissioner when I was still at St. Gregory's and I got to work with him for a couple of years. He's He's been fantastic. He lives about two miles away from me. So uh, in UC, I was about two miles away from my from where I live. So I'm able to, you know, really kind of utilize him as a as a resource. And, they, and if they mind, uh, I don't I don't really care. I just think they, you know, they're, they're a great resource, both of them. And uh, they've been a great benefit to me and, and obviously the conference. So, well, you came in late in 2020 and, you know, it's, it's not that far removed. We all know what 2020 was like, uh, especially that uh, that. Uh, that that word that we don't speak about very often anymore. I hope we don't have to. But what was it like coming in seriously with with COVID going on? And uh, th- there were a lot of questions at the time as to yeah. you know what was going to get played, what wasn't going to get played, uh, different a- athletics and and activities. What was it like coming in in the middle of that? You know, it was um, it, it pretty interesting. There's you know I came in October of 2020, and by that time, most of our fall sports had been postponed and move to the spring of 21. So I came in and had a couple of months where there really wasn't much going on except for trying to create some, you know, COVID protocols for game, game management, testing, all those things that we don't want to have to go through ever again. Um, but it was really kind of, it was strange. I, I think people were saying that I was drinking from the fire hose, but actually there was really not a lot going on until the second semester when I think we had, 16 sports going in the second semester, all the fall, including football, men, women's soccer, volleyball, moved to the spring. Um, I don't really remember that time. I think we were all kind of in a in a in a daze, just trying to get through uh, each of the competitions, but we were able to get everything finished. Um, so it was really quite, it, it was like a three year like in dog years. It was like three years of being a commissioner. That one year of of uh, being commissioner in COVID. So learned a lot. Um, had to put out a lot of fires. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great experience. And then after that, we we're, you know, we kind of came back to some, some normal activity and, uh, I think we're, we're looking pretty good now. So, well, I listen for an outsider's perspective, the conference looks to be doing quite well at this point. And I do want to talk about that a little bit more because there's growth in, in a number of ways. I, when I, I say that, uh, you know, I, I might slip and say coach every now and again, well, you were coaching at St. Gregory's the first time I had an opportunity to meet you when some of the, the uh, you know, individual sports things I was doing. I've been broadcasting since 2001, but getting to do my own thing uh, since, you know, around 2011 and 2012 and getting out there and getting a feel for this. I always appreciated that you let me get to visit with you, interview you when St. Gregory's was on a run in men's basketball, a fantastic season, great players. You make it all the way to the fab four that year. And uh, that that's really where, where I still think of you as just being a great coach. <laughs> well, it's funny all the years that I coached, that was by far the best. And when I think about me being a coach, that's the only year I think about. So that's probably <laughs> a good thing. It was, it was the best year we had in school history and, uh, it was really great because 
we had Joey McWilliams come in and have multiple interviews with myself and with players. And we really didn't get that through any other, you know, news uh, source. So it was really pretty awesome that you took the time and did that and highlighted, you know, us and what our mission was and, and what we were trying to accomplish. And, and I uh, had some great kids that year. I had a great uh, locker room, guys that weren't starters, but they bought in. Um, and it was just a, it was a, like I said, it was one of those times that when I think about me coaching, that's, that's the year I think about, um, probably to keep me away from any sadness because we had such a good year that year uh, compared to a lot of the others. But yeah, I just, again, I think I thanked you every time that you got us on a podcast or, or some other kind of platform. It was really a big deal. We didn't, we didn't get that from any other, any other uh, platform and it was helpful for all of us. So well, much appreciated, Joey. I know that's 10 years ago, but it was still, it still uh, <laughs> rings true. I've, I have the same haircut, so it's all right. It, uh, I, I, and it meant so much to me. It really did. So I wanted, I wanted to, to definitely say thank you. You know, you talk about that run, and it was a good run, but the Sooner Athletic Conference, I, and, and I'm going to use a, a phrase I, I've heard before, the, the late Bill Walton, was he would regularly talk about the Pac-12, Pac-10, Pac-12, whatever it happened to be, uh, as the Conference of Champions. And, you know, whether that's the case or not, I think a lot could be said for the Sooner Athletic Conference along those lines too. It's been so successful, you know, I, in in my time of of thinking about basketball, softball, baseball. Um, you look at Oklahoma City by itself has seventy three national championships. Right. Um, I think a lot could be said to that. It's it's quite a conference. Yeah, it, it is. And so a couple of years ago, um, one of our sports information directors. Um, was trying to promote this, uh, our little tagline as where champions play. And it has stuck. And we've, we've put it on a couple of, you know, uh, hashtags and, and, and other uh, parts of our website. But yeah, 112 national championships, 73 by OCU alone. Um, by far, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I'm actually trying to get with, uh, with an NEIA official to find out the total across the board for all the conferences in AI history. And probably uh, the Sooner has the most with 112. We actually almost had, almost came up with another one this past spring. Um, mm -hmm. Seems like that's the case. And, uh, and actually every, every uh, season, fall, winter, and spring, we have teams go to the national championship, national tournament. Uh, we were within a game of, of winning the softball championship with USAO. Um, she's done a fantastic job out there. Um, but yeah, we're 112 where championship where champions play. It's uh, it, it kind of speaks for itself right there. So we're visiting with the commissioner of the Sooner Athletic Conference here on Midwest Sports Net today. It's Commissioner's Week, and it's a it really is an, an honor to get to visit with you all. And and uh, John Martin, uh, you have the um, the Commissioner's Cup now. I mean, with all that goes on throughout the conference, and I, I want to talk about some of those teams, like I said here in just a moment, but uh, with 12 full-time members right now, so many of them seeing success. But then you compile that, and, and you have a Commissioner's Cup now that is just finishing up its second season. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's, so it's uh, pretty similar to what some of the other NCAA conferences do and similar to like the Learfield Cup where we take into consideration the performance of the entire athletic department of each member school. So not just a national championship or a conference championship, but where each team placed in the regular season standings throughout the year. So we take you know, all 16 sports um, and we average it all out. And we have a, a actual trophy that we present to the athletic director and, and his or her school. Um, so last year that ended in 2023, Oklahoma City University won the Commissioner's Cup. And this past spring, after the conference tournaments were over, um, it panned out that Mid-America Christian University was the, was the Commissioner's Cup winner. Uh, the president was really excited about that, and they've taken pictures and, and put it all over social media. Uh, but really, it's, an, it's a, it, so for some of those teams, it actually could be that a team finishes or a school finishes second in everything across the board but it's the average of where those, all those teams finish um, throughout the year, the, uh, throughout the entire uh, academic year. Um, so it's, it's really neat that we have that in place. Two years ago, we started it and it's not going anywhere. Our, our uh, coaches love it, administrators love it. And then also all the student athletes love that. They, uh, it's just a little bit of extra, um, you know, honor for, for those student athletes at those universities. So. And I'm, and I'm happy for them too. Lots, lots of good folks out there 
at Mid America Christian, oh, yeah. and, and uh, worked hard for something like that. So that's that's good for them. The Sooner Athletic Conference, uh, the name would denote Sooner State, but it's not just the Sooner State alone. As the conference footprint now into four states, and actually within about a week now, it's going to be into five states as well. Twelve full time members, soon to be thirteen, with the addition of College of the Ozarks from Springfield area. Right. Yeah, happy to have them uh, them come in. We talked with them a couple of years ago about coming in as a member. They were independent for a year or two. Um, they're just it, it's such a, a good school. It's a very um, uh, it, it's a athletically it's also a very good school. Um, they're going to compete and raise our level. We're really looking forward to them coming to the conference. Um, one thing, so as you said, on July first, we'll have thirteen members uh, with College of the Ozarks being that thirteenth. Just kind of a side note on that. Um, so our conference governance really is governed by the athletic directors, myself, and then our university presidents. So what's really cool about this is of our 13 presidents as of July 1st, five of them will be female presidents. And I don't think that is, is common either um, throughout probably any conference. But we have we'll have five, and it's really kind of a feather in our cap. And these are very awesome, capable, you know, uh, uh, female leaders that we're looking forward to have them lead the conference in the uh, in, in the right direction. So, wow, I didn't know I I didn't know that. That's yeah. that really is something. Yeah. But by the way, I want I want to clarify something really quickly. I said Springfield area. Uh, I I want to make sure that anyone watching, I know it's Point Lookout. That's right. Just want to <laughs> say I know it's Point Lookout. Yeah. Um, didn't, didn't want to get too general there in case anyone's watching and says he didn't know where we are. I didn't That's know right. Well, by saying that, you probably avoided some emails coming in. So, yeah, I look out close to Branson. Um, so we're looking forward to having them in the conference and all that they're going to bring. And uh, Historically, they've hosted the, uh, the basketball championship, the NEI Division II. Back when we had two divisions, they would host that championship there. Um, so they have, you know, it's, it's just a great facility, great uh uh, you know, uh, environment and scenery and place to be. So looking forward to that. With, you know, the, the, again, footprint being what it is now into five states, it actually goes a little bit beyond that. When you talk about some associate members, specifically, I, I would bring in football. That's something, that's a sport that the Sooner Athletic Conference has not until recently sponsored and, and rightfully so. I mean, you know, there were so few, one team, maybe two that, that would have football at that point in time, but now it is a football conference as well. And so you have schools from not only the, the states we mentioned, uh, well, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Arkansas, and Missouri full-time members, but uh, Louisiana, Louisiana, Arizona as well that come in with football. Talk a little bit about having that sport as well. Yeah, that's uh, it's it's interesting. When I was coaching in the SAC, we didn't have that, um, and then Stan was able to bring in uh, three, uh, four or five of our Sooner teams, and then combined with some of the other now what are now affiliate members, um, and we have a great football conference. We at one point had two schools in Arizona, so every year, one you know our schools had to go out and play either. Uh, Arizona Christian or Ottawa, Arizona. Now we just have the one OUAZ out there, but um, yeah, it's been great. I mean, the, I, I live probably 20 minutes away from Langston University. So that's kind of my home football uh, stadium that I go to. I go and, and watch them play all the teams that come in um, and play them. So it's really uh, football's fantastic. And I mean, we're in Oklahoma, so it's not anything that we could probably avoid for very long. And, and luckily we, we were able to, uh, to capitalize on on some of that. Now we have uh, Oklahoma Panhandle State is was is new to the conference as of 2017, I believe. Came in with uh, at Langston shortly after, but those two schools with football allowed us to to have this uh, this conference grouping. And it's it's nice. By the way, I love going to to Langston. I have broadcast from Point Lookout before. Uh, I have broadcast. Uh, it seems like. Well, about every other year from Langston as well, too. Coach Rogers has a lot going on up there and a uh, fantastic program, too. With with that in mind and, and talking about, you know, some of the, the individuals and um, you you mentioned this uh, talk uh, a little bit earlier, I think, when talking about the Commissioner's Cup and, and what these universities are doing, the, the people that are involved there. It's, it's not always about where they finish nationally. Um, you talk about this on the website too, inside the Sooner. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's it's something that we've, as a group, we we wanted to highlight 
all the things that our athletes and coaches and administrators do that are off the field of play, that are outside of, of the gymnasium. All these little things that are layers that the public doesn't really get to see. Um, so we actually, I think it was about a year ago, we started this inside the Sooner um, uh, portion of our website. So it highlights, you know, a, a group, a coach that might take a few student athletes on a mission trip. There was one athlete who wrote about her um, uh, quest to um, to kind of broaden the horizon for mental health awareness, to bring more, you know, spotlight on that. Um, we've had a couple of, uh, there was also a, a great story about one of our basketball coaches who has a son with autism and how that son became an inspiration to the rest of the basketball team and the university, the whole department. I mean, it's, it, it's so much better than reading about, you know, a, a three to two baseball game, and which is, which is fine, but that's, that's very much part of the conference. But when we get to hear stories about that, um, there was one that was a baseball player who had heart surgery as, as a, a young, a young kid, probably nine or 10 years old. And it's called, um, the, I think the, the heading is, um, heart surgery, home runs and hope. And like, I mean, alliteration, fantastic right there. But those kind of stories that I think you just show that we're a lot more than, you know, balls and strikes and game winning shots and, and turnovers and touchdowns. There's so much more to the conference. And as I say that, um, our athletic directors are it, it's such a fantastic group. Um, they're so personality driven. You know, they answer the phone when you call. They respond to a text. We just really get things done as a group. And there's no um, I mean, obviously, there's there's competition between athletic athletic directors, but we uh, that group competes and collaborates. And that's what makes our conference so great and really makes it to where where champions play. Uh, and they're fun to read, too. And, and nice to nice to see those stories. So I really appreciate that. As as a conference commissioner, I I would ask then: Is there anything that that you do, whether it be what you do in your role as commissioner or outside of that, that someone just looking in on your life would say, "Wow, I didn't know a conference commissioner would do that." Is there anything that that you do that fits that? You know, I think when people envision what a commissioner is or does, um, you know, going to games and handing out trophies, right? And, it, and that's part of it. That's like maybe 0.05% of it. The rest is uh, probably the rest of it is um, uh, putting out fires. <laughs> it's probably something that that we all do. Um, but it's it's uh, it's great because we get to work with student athletes and, and coaches and administrators that are, like I said, they're all uh, great people. And it's very personality driven, very much personality driven. Um, so outside of like the, the I, actually, so this is this is a good little story. So I start out each day with a to do list, and by the end of the day, I may have scratched off two of the ten things, but then there was a whole other page of things that actually had to be done and were completed, or things that popped up or thrown on my lap. And um, so there's really a lot of those, it's kind of an improvise, adapt, overcome position. You have to figure it out and get things done. Your to-do list, you might just change the date uh, for the next day and, and keep it on your desk, because uh, there's just a lot of those things that have to be taken care of that are uh, important and urgent to the to the conference. And um, you know, we're, that's part of it. I mean, I wouldn't change it uh, for the world. Love my position. Love that I'm doing this. When I interviewed uh, almost, I guess, coming up on four years ago, I said, this is a job I think I could probably retire in. And I'm probably a few years away from retiring. Uh, but it I definitely so. something that I, yeah, that, uh, you know, I, I love doing it. So just I couldn't be happier in this position, get to work with great people and, and still reach out and communicate to a guy like Joey McWilliams 10 years after I met him you know, to tout how great the Super Athletic Conference is and uh, Midwest Sportsnet. So, well, uh, thank you. That that means a lot to me. And by the way, John Hudson set the standard. So, you you know, if, if you do a number, a few more decades and then retire, <laughs> that's, you know, right. that's, I, that's what Super yeah. Athletic Conference commissioners are supposed to do, right? So, well, John Hudson is a legend. There's there's no doubt. There's no doubt. The only similarity I have is that I love basketball. My name is John. Okay. Everything else is uh, I've got a long way to go to catch up to him and Stan also, which is just fantastic. And as I said, I still reach out to him and ask him questions and, you know, and, and he's, he's, he's great with that. So. 
Well, okay, then I'll 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 let us wrap up our time uh, in in this that. You know, anybody out there watching, whether it be a parent or a student athlete, if, if you were reaching out to student athletes now, you had a chance to say something to give a commercial, if you will, mm -hmm. to to play in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Here's your opportunity. Well, you know, and I've said it, this will be the third time where champions play. That is it's it's fantastic. That's our that's our tagline. But there's also so much more to it than that. Um, you know, these these uh, institutions are, are fantastic academic institutions. Um, a student can come in and, and, and play and actually, you know, get a great education, uh, have time to do all those things on campus that he or she wants to do. Um, it's, it's a great league to be in uh, with, with fantastic leadership. I, I wouldn't want, you know, I'm, I'm a product of the SAC. And um, there's a long a litany of, of people who have been in the SAC and are still doing fantastic things. Uh, Latricia Trammell was a coach at Oklahoma City University. She's now coaching... Um, uh, in the WNBA um, for the Dallas Wings. Buzz Williams was at OCU as, a, as an assistant coach, student assistant, and he's actually the head men's basketball coach at Texas A&M University. Um, there are a lot of like similar stories like that, and that's probably I'm also going to have, um, you know, that human interest inside the Sooner portion kind of identify some of those other SAC greats. Um, we're looking at in, in the next probably year or so establishing a SAC Hall of Fame and, uh, you know, I, I think that kind of gives us even more legitimacy than we already have. Just something like that added benefit. Um, just be a part of that. You know, the student athletes who want to come in and play and get a great education. Um, you know, it's the SAC is a place to be for that. It's it's really a, it's a fantastic place. And and I wouldn't change anything that I've done. Um, I'm SAC through and through and, and will forever be thankful and appreciative of of what the conference has done for me. All right. Well, there you go. I, I don't think anyone could have said that better. And, and I, I appreciate the depth that you bring to that, again, being a product of the, of the conference as well. Commissioner John Martin, the third commissioner for the Sooner Athletic Conference. Sir, it's a privilege. It really is a privilege to get to visit with you today and to get to talk about the great conference. And I just appreciate you taking some time with us here on Midwest Sports Net during Commissioner's Week. Thank you, Joe. It's been fantastic. And I really appreciate the first five minutes that were off air when we could just kind of dial in and talk about family. And And you're, you're a great individual and I, and I love everything that, that you're doing. So anything I can do to help, holler at me. Mm -hmm.